Hey, hey, every pony! it's time for another Digi Quickie, which, as you may or may not know, does not refer to the length of the video, which are typically longer than my normal videos, but in fact it's referring to the fact that it's not scripted and doesn't take that long to edit, so don't complain about it. I haven't done one of these in a little while, and I kind of feel like I've stopped communicating with my subscriber base for the last almost six months or so. Uh, I think I did a lot more of it in the beginning. Sort of giving updates, talking about how I felt about various things, about my channel and the community and interacting with you guys. The largest causes of this are the fact that uh, too many people talk to me on Skype and stuff and Tumblr and Twitter and stuff like that and I get, I get talked to a lot in various places and so I feel like I say everything but then I, it's kind of unfair I think to the rest of you that you don't get to hear. Um, whatever I'm talking about to everyone else. So yeah, fun update videos. I've also been watching a bunch of uh, videos by one Adam Johnston, who is the Your Movie Sucks guy, and he does a lot of these little vlogs, and his fans seem to like them, and he seems to like doing them, and I was like, I want to do more of those. I haven't done enough. So anyway, that's why we're here. Something on my mind lately I wanted to talk about is how I feel about the review and analysis community, especially of my Little Pony. People have been asking me about it lately because of the fact that there are so many people who are now doing analysis and reviews of My Little Pony. It's kind of reached an event horizon. As you probably know, I do posting on Equestria Daily, the biggest My Little Pony fan site, where I share analysis and review videos, and I've been very selective about them on there. I probably post five to eight a week on like their own posts and then pe the ones that people submit um, if I don't post them up in my post then they go into roundups and then even then there's some that we don't even post in the roundups there's just there's tons and tons of reviews coming out right now uh, I think for the premiere I watched about 30 and then each week has uh, not been quite as bad but yeah there's a lot and People want to know how I feel about it, because I kind of started it. I didn't start doing My Little Pony reviews, I was not the first, but I definitely started the trend, and if you doubt that, watch a bunch of these videos and see how they all do exactly what I do with the My Little my Pony on screen and the picture up there. Um, it's, it's incredibly common, there's a lot of them, which I'm not complaining about, I like it. I did the style that way because it worked for me, it was something that I could edit easily and really the point was about what I was saying because I you know originally just had footage on screen it was like oh I can't have the whole screen covered up alright put it in the top left whatever um, so yeah I get why people are doing it and I'm fine with it in fact I kind of like that there are so many reviews out there because I want that <laughs> like what you have to understand is that even outside of My Little Pony I, all I do is watch analysis videos like that's I watch exponentially more analysis videos than I do, like I watch more of movies than I do watch movies. I watch more analysis videos of video games than I do play video games. I'm really obsessed with them. You may know that I have a website called The Digibump, which is all about promoting analysis videos. I haven't updated it at all since opening it because I haven't had the time, which sucks because there's some people like Adam Johnston who I really want to add, or I still never added extra credits, or Cloud Cuckoo Country who I even told I was going to add to the site. So. Yeah, it needs to be updated, but in any case, I love analysis videos. I'm obsessed with them. I want there to be more of them. I want everyone to make analysis videos, but at the same time, obviously, I don't necessarily want to watch everyone's analysis videos. But um, I'm glad that so many people are doing it. What I what I wish, though, is that I felt that more of them were deeply invested in it because it does strike me as a fad kind of thing. Like, people see other people doing it and they go, oh, they're doing it, I want to do it. And then they try it, you know, uh, for themselves. Not necessarily out of, like, a deep passion for analysis, but just because, like, it seems like a thing that you should maybe do. I don't know. Um, it's not particularly hard to do, so I guess it's something you feel you can jump into easily. And I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, it's hard to do well and be like, oh, <laughs> I'm good at it. But, you know, I get why it's why it's something that so many people are doing, why it exploded so much. I don't want to see less of it. I just want to see more different stuff is really 
the thing that's getting at me right now. Because I watch so many videos for each new episode, and most of them are kind of the same. It'll be like, this episode's really good. It's got interaction between these two characters, and that's nice. It's got this, this, and this, and those are cool things. And personally, I've always been a big fan of the idea of, like, if you're not going to comment on a, like, make a real point about something, then don't put that thing in the video. Though I get why people do it, and I do it sometimes myself where I'll, I'll just bring up something because it's neat and be like, oh, I enjoyed that scene, but I have nothing really to say about it, but I enjoyed it, so you should know about it. And, you know, I'm fine with that, but when that's most of the video, like, there's that one thing that you really were, like, had a great analytical point about, but then the rest of the video is like, here's what I thought about the episode. Sometimes I wish you just made a 20... 20 second or two minute video you know not every analysis video needs to be seven minutes long and talk about the entire episode if you know that everyone else is doing it that way it's weird because it sounds like I'm absolving myself of the same criticism because my videos are typically about seven minutes long um, I try to get mine out really fast and be pretty comprehensive you know I want it to be mostly analytical points but I know what kind of stuff people will complain if I don't cover in my videos, so I try to cover a lot of ground and say something, at least a little bit of something about everything. Like, you know, me and Tom's video that we did on the new episode, we make all these analytical points, but I threw in just like at the beginning, like, oh, I love Miss Harshwini's facial expressions. Oh, the song was cool, and then we just don't bring it up again. But I, I knew if I didn't mention it, then people would be like, well, what did you think of the song? It was cool. I have nothing analytical to say about the song. Beyond that, though, the biggest thing for me is that I think too many of these reviewers are assuming the same style. And that is kind of pointless, because there's really no point to trying to do what others are already doing, because they're already doing it. Me and Tom have pretty similar styles. The main thing that separates us is that he cares more about narrative and character arcs than I do. And that's why when we agree on an episode, I try to get us to work together because I don't want our videos to be redundant. Like, I hate when I make a video and he makes a video and we've made, like, all the same points. And I'm like, why did we do that, you know? So that's why I keep doing all these collabs with Tom is because I don't want our videos to be redundant. And me and him work really well together. We're good friends. We, you know, I can, we can literally watch an episode and I open a Google Doc and we just write a script together, like, immediately. And it works. So, you know, we're, we're a good team. We have similar styles, similar interests. And so, yeah. And... The problem is that if everyone else tries to say the kind of stuff that me and Tom are going to say, then you're going to end up with the same video. And if you're not as good at, like, you know, um, not necessarily even saying, like, oh, if you're not as good at writing it, just, like, the editing part, you know, like, we try to be somewhat high quality. And personally, I hold that, I, I like, I, f I hold a lot of importance in, like, the quality of the, like, imagery and the sound quality of your review. I really like reviews that are entertaining and feel well made because, you know, I get that not everyone can afford to buy a nice microphone or, or have decent editing software, but at the same time, if you're passionate about doing it and I'm supposed to care about your video, then I'd like to see that effort put in, you know? I got a job to pay for my microphone, like that's why I went to work, is because I had made some internet videos that the audio was kind of shitty and it bothered me, so I went and got a job bought a really nice microphone and started making these videos so you know I, I do think it's important to have the quality and to put in the effort to having the quality if you're really passionate about what you're doing which you know if I'm supposed to care about what you're doing then you should be passionate about it but more importantly than that I just want to see more people come at it from unique angles like um, I don't know maybe some people don't understand why I like some of the reviewers I like so much because you'll notice that there are certain reviewers I promote a lot more than others because I really like their perspective. Um, I will always pretty much promote Drowning in Horseshoes stuff because he has this really comedic edge. He's, I mean, I'm not saying that his comedy style is completely unique because he very much comes from the background of like the, um, the video game review scene, but he's not angry or anything. Like he has that, that sort of influence, but he's more of a just fun guy, he's very genuine, and his videos have a totally unique edge. Usually they sound totally different from mine, 
Um, and I'm always really interested. I'm like, wow, I can't believe his review sounds so different from mine. That's great. That's really interesting. I'm a big fan of Rookie Wampus because she deliberately comes at these videos from a feminist perspective, and that's great. It's not my perspective. I don't want my perspective echoed back to me. Um, and part of the trouble there is that a lot of people do. Like, I've gotten the impression where a lot of people will watch my videos and be mad that they don't agree with me. And I'm like, well, you're not supposed to. It's my opinion. It's not your opinion. Um, a lot of people think reviewers are supposed to be objective. And that is stupid. Not only because there is no objectivity in art. You can't say, this is the correct interpretation. This is the correct opinion to have. Because mm, there's rules. And there is no rules. I mean, there's, there's agreed upon rules. But that does not mean they are correct rules. Even when it comes to technical stuff, a lot of people will say, oh, but you can't deny that the animation quality is very technically amazing. And even then, those are technical rules set up by, like, a school, you know? If I want to make an animation where every frame jumps back and forth dramatically and in, in it's like a seizure-inducing headache spiral, then you might think, oh, that's obviously bad, but it's completely subjective. If I think it's good, then it's good. So there's really nowhere in art that you can be objective. Trying to be is kind of pointless. And more importantly, why would every reviewer want to be objective? Because if there was an objective truth, then every reviewer would be saying the exact same thing. Like, if the episode were objectively bad, then every reviewer would have to say it was bad. What's the point of having more than one reviewer? I don't get it. Like, they're not going to offer different perspectives if there's only one perspective to go for. No, reviews should all have very unique perspectives. You should be coming at it from the angle of, this is my take on it. And, you know, that's very important to me. So, it just so happens that the way I watch TV, I care a lot about the creative intent of the producer, not because I think it's more correct, but because it's just interesting to me personally, you know? I look at it and I say, what were they thinking? Or what was, uh, you know, what was going on here? Um, and I don't think it necessarily makes the episodes better or worse to know what they're thinking. Like, uh, I confirmed with Dave Polsky that Games Ponies Play was like a fuck up. Like, they literally just fucked up. They, they, they mixed up something at some point in the script and it just came out not making sense and they didn't have time to fix it. And, I mean, that doesn't make the episode good. Now I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, well, that absolves everything. It's still a shitty episode. It, it makes me feel better that they know it's a fuck-up. That it's not like they wrote it and went, oh, this is gold. We'll put it out there. <laughs> it's like, no, it was a mistake. But, I don't know. I like knowing that stuff. I like looking into what the, what the creators thought. And, lately, I'm really big on looking at the morals. Originally, I wasn't. Like, I really didn't care that much about morals in my television but after doing elements of brony where we talk a lot about the morals of my little pony and the morals of its audience it i got really interested in it like suddenly that's the coolest thing in the show to me is looking at like what the show suggests about our society and what what our opinions of the show suggest about our society and stuff and yeah it can be really fascinating which is part of why flight to the finish appealed to me so much because it had like this really deep and interesting moral and if I were to revisit that episode, I would even point out how there's elements of that moral which are wrong. Like, maybe they shouldn't be so quick to say, Oh, Scootaloo, you can't fly. There's no possible way you ever will. And it's like, maybe there's technology. Maybe she could be rehabilitated. Maybe she, you know, doesn't necessarily have to just give up. But at the same time, I don't know, there's a lot. Everything's complicated. And what's great about MLP is that it usually allows the moral to be complicated. You know, even if the show doesn't explicitly say, oh, it's complicated. It presents complicated morals unintentionally sometimes, and that's great. That's completely besides the point. I want more people doing unique analysis. I've been begging Neil X, the editor of uh, Elements of Brony and host of it and creator, I've been begging him to do Buddhist analysis of MLP because he's a Buddhist, and he talks about how his Buddhist beliefs inform his enjoyment of the show. Like, he mentions it a lot in Elements of Brony. He talks to me about it, and I'm like, make Buddhist analysis. That would be awesome. I'd be totally game for that because I'm not a Buddhist and I'd learn something about another person. And, you know, understanding things about one another, what makes us different is what is how we like each other, you know? Um, I said this extensively in my Look Before You Sleep video and it's been my big thing ever since then is we don't 
learn to like each other by ignoring our differences. We have to accept our differences. So, or, or at least acknowledge them and not be shitty about them, you know? Like, if I said, oh, you're a Buddhist, but, you know, that part of your opinion's not important. The way that me and you relate to it that are the same is important. No. The way he relates to it uniquely is important, and that's interesting, and that's what I want to see. So, out of all the My Little Pony analysts out there, if there's if, if I had to respond to all the videos that I watch, a lot of them are good. A lot of them make good points. Um, a lot of them, if in a vacuum where there were no one else making MLP analysis, wouldn't have all that much redundancy because, like, if it was one guy doing it, then, you know, you wouldn't say, oh, I heard this, like, 18 other times in other videos. But you do. So I'd love it if there was more, like, just... Anything that you know other people are going to say, try to, like, hedge that part down and expand on the stuff that you know no one has said. Or that's, like, a response. You know, I loved the Mysterious Mr. Enters video on Daring Don't because it was deliberately responding to mine. It was, none of it was repeated points. It was, like, I see it completely differently, here's why, and then, you know, he takes it apart in his own way. But then, you know, just because someone agrees with me doesn't mean that they have to say the same thing um or agrees with him drowning in horseshoes review is mostly positive little sprinkles like of negative he agrees with some of the stuff mr enter says some of the stuff i say but he portrays it from a completely different perspective that's all his own so um one of the things i loved clover keen when she did the premiere video it starts off with her literally like talking about her day like what led up to this episode and i thought that was great because there's so much to be said about what our personal experience is. I'm not that interested in what you think objectively of the show. I really don't care. If you're trying to view the show in a vacuum, I don't fucking care. Like, don't say, oh, I was in a bad mood when I watched it, and that means my review is incorrect, and therefore I should, you know, wait until I'm whatever. You're never going to be not affected. You're never going to be unbiased. There's always going to be something. So when she talked about, like, you know, hyping herself up, that she watched it on BerryTube, talked to all these drunken people, she went for a run listening to pony music and got really pumped. And then she watched it like while drinking, recorded it, and there was this big sense of excitement, and that was cool, you know? It, it might not be the end-all, be-all analysis video of it, but it's an interesting perspective and a good story. It had a good narrative, you know, watching her do that. My videos don't try to be the only analysis that you need to see. You know, that's that's not my goal. Most episodes I plan to go back to. I eventually want to re-analyze most of these because my perspective often does change. Like, um, you can't see my Sleepless in Ponyville video right now because I had to take it down because of copyright notices um, since it was before I started using the pony. But I've completely changed my opinion on that episode at this point, and I want to redo it. And I feel that way about a few other episodes. So... Yeah, D don't try to be the only review you're ever going to do. Don't try to be the only review on the internet. Try to be a unique, fresh perspective that can be viewed alongside other videos, you know? <clears throat> don't pretend that there's no one else doing this. Don't pretend that, like, you're, like people who watch your video aren't going to watch 15 other analysis videos, because they are. So, you know, being redundant is redundant. It's just pointless, you know, and you may have noticed I don't really like redundancy because I talk about it a lot in my Castlemania video and other places. So, anyway, aside from that, also, another comment on the analysis community. I think it's been doing a great job of flourishing in the way that I wanted it to, um, even though no one knew that I wanted it to because the funny thing is I made the the R My Little Pony analysis Reddit board because the whole goal where, there was that I would not be the only person able to promote and judge content because channels get a huge bump from being on Equestria Daily don't get me wrong like it's it's not as big as people think it is but as a way of just like getting you off the ground it's great um, so I think Equestria Daily is still very important but it's just me doing it, you know, and it really can't be more than just me. It's 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 always going to be me posting the, the videos on there, and, you know, I get submissions, and that helps because you guys tell me, like, hey, maybe try this, and I find stuff that way, but, uh, but I'm the one deciding, and I don't want to be the only one deciding. I want people to take matters into their own hands, and so 
I made the Our My Little Pony analysis board because I was hoping people would go on there and like, if you're really interested in analysis, you'll go look up other people's stuff and find the ones you like. And people did a decent job of that. Um, there's a significant number of analysis channels that have grown without me even touching them. Like maybe they got into a couple roundups or I posted one video, but other than that, they've grown totally organically. Um, there's some people with a couple hundred subscriptions who just came up through My Little Pony. And, uh, that's not something to be underestimated. I think a lot of people look at my subscriber count and they're like, oh, I only have 200, my channel's worthless. He has 70,000. And what you really need to understand is that my numbers are crazy and not normal at all. Like, having 200 subscribers when I got there on this channel was like a huge monumental exciting thing for me because I've run my old YouTube channel for six years and it, it only got to a hundred subscribers by the time I made this new pony channel you know don't underestimate how much like you know a lot of the smaller analysis channels who have like 5,000 subs that's still a lot of subs that's a lot of people who care just about you and your opinion and you know I think everyone needs to be a, in less of a rush to be big, because if you have 5,000 subscribers, you have a fucking big audience. Like, you know, me of a year ago is envious of you, because, I, again, I ran a channel... Now, mind you, my old YouTube channel I wasn't taking very seriously, but I did run an anime blog for six years that never had more than maybe 200 regular readers at the absolute most, and even that had completely died off by the time I started doing pony videos, so... If I had ever had 5,000 subscribers, I would have been, like, just overwhelmed, you know? It would have been crazy, because I, I had a big ego, even with, like, no readers, so... Yeah, my ego is, you know, ridiculous now, because I have 70k, so it's just like I'm constantly going, Oh my god, I'm so awesome, and... Whatever. So, yeah, um... Definitely, I like that the community is communicating, because it it's a community what I want to see is also more like commenters who don't treat the videos they're watching as just content creators but it's like other people a lot of my readers or or commenters are just like fans of me and I get that that's cool I like having fans but don't be afraid to like converse because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I am busy. I'm not trying to, like, make this an invitation, like, oh, everyone start messaging me again. I have a video about why I'm too busy to talk a lot of the time. But what I mean is um, the people making analysis videos are all just like you. They're all people who are just really interested in the show and who are, like, conversing with each other. And I like, I really enjoy when I watch YouTube videos that are directly responsive to other YouTubers. Like I said, don't pretend this is in a vacuum. I like it when someone puts out a video that's like, it's not just, oh, this is my daring don't review. It's like, this is deliberately responding to mine. Like, again, Mysterious Mr. Enter with his daring don't review was like, he took everything that I complained about and he justified it. And it was a great video because he wasn't pretending like no one else had reviewed the episode before. So... I really like that stuff. Build on ideas. Like, that's what makes it a community, not just a bunch of content creators who happen to be, you know, who happen to be doing the same thing. A community is where everyone's working together. We're sharing ideas. It's not about me imparting my ideas from on high and then you all, like, look at it and comment on it. Like, it's a conversation with me. I take a lot of what you guys say into account. And yes, I read like all my comments, at least for the first few days after a video comes out. Uh, I may not respond to all of them, but I do read all of them. And I think a lot about the things you guys say. Um, you can ask my girlfriend. She has to hear me talk about it a lot. <laughs> like, go on and on about what my commenters are saying about me. So, yeah, um, you know, it, it is a conversation. We are a community. We do need to communicate and not just try to pretend that we're all content creators that age is kind of over and I'm glad it's over like I like that we live in an era of people you know like content generation is the same as <coughs> communication because that's where I live I don't live on TV I don't another thing is that a lot of people who write reviews or do content on the internet wish they were doing something else that they see as higher and that's really not me like I have no desire to write cartoons. I have no desire to animate. I don't want to be a director anymore. I did when I was younger, but 
I don't really want to work on TV shows. I don't want to work on movies. I want to make analysis. I want to be a part of an analysis community. Like, this is what I like doing. Um, so, yeah, I want to see more people who aren't, like, pretending that they're doing a show or something. That this, like, if you're doing analysis videos, be proud of what you're doing and treat it like this is your actual thing, you know. Because um, I do. I treat it like this is this is what I'm actually doing with my life. It's not... This is not, oh, I'm doing this for now while I work up to have my own show on Fox kind of thing. No, I, this is what I want to do on YouTube for as long as possible. So, yeah. I don't know where I'm going with that. I mostly just want to have a video that I can talk to you guys. I don't feel like I talk to you guys. I really don't. I've been making, you know, fewer, not, not, not fewer videos. Since season four started, I've made quite a few. Um, I guess I was scared always that my vlogs or things like this would outnumber my regular videos during the summer um, because I was not doing as many videos so I was like if I keep doing vlogs it'll outnumber them. I feel like a lot of you guys do want to hear from me. Um, I know a lot of people don't care. These videos typically only get like you know one to five thousand views. I know that like not that many people really want to see my face and listen to me ramble for 25 minutes when it's not really about my little pony. But at the same time, those of you who do watch these videos are my favorite. You're the ones who I'm really counting on. You're the people who are going to eventually take me to other places. Like, you know, I'm not going to be reviewing My Little Pony for the rest of my life because this show is going to end. Um, and by the end of season four, I my goal is to be doing other things along with My Little Pony. I'm not going to stop. As long as they're making the show, I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm going to do all of season two. I'm going to do every episode. I'm going to do a bunch of character-focused episodes. I've got these plans I've had for over a year of all these things I'm going to do, and they're still going to happen. But I want to be transitioning. I want to be doing other things that aren't My Little Pony on this channel, you know, by mid-time, or by the end of season four, obviously. So, yeah, um... There will be on this channel eventually non. I did the Pokemon videos recently, and you know, not a lot of people watch that, but a lot of you did. And not just because you like Pokemon already, but because you like watching my videos. And that's the important thing. It's really about, you know, the people who just want to see me and hear from me. You guys are the ones who are going to carry my channel into the future. So I like you guys. And if you like hearing from me, I like talking. Um, just haven't had time to do it much. So. If anyone's curious while I'm here, might as well talk about like monetization and Patreon because I haven't talked about those things in a long time. If anyone's curious how I'm doing with that, I did get monetization turned back on on my channel. You may have noticed that there have been ads on a lot of these videos and it's been going okay, I guess. I haven't been it hasn't been on long enough for me to actually receive any money from YouTube, but it looks like it's going at about the same kind of payments I was getting before it got turned off. Uh, so, yeah, that could mean some decent money for me that I don't have to worry about how much money I have to give my mom at the end of each month, and I will hopefully be able to move up to move in with my girlfriend in Montana in January or early February. I'd really like to be able to do that, so I might have enough money to do that. Patreon has been going okay. Um... A lot of people, there's a lot to be said about it that hasn't been publicly. Um, a lot of people ask me questions and I'll answer them, but I should really do another video on Patreon now that I pretty much know how it works. So uh, I might put out a video just for that if people are interested. Like, let me know if you want me to put out a video just about how Patreon works and how much I'm actually making on there because as far as I know, Patreon doesn't care if you tell people how much you make on there, unlike YouTube. Um, I'll make a video about it. The answer, short answer, is about $600 a month. So, yeah. Uh, no matter how many videos I make, it, it, it always averages out to about $600 a month. So, and that's not bad. That's enough for me, personally, to, to subsist on. But I'd like to be making more, because eventually I'm not gonna live in my parents' house, and, you know, I'm still planning to be a content creator on YouTube well into the future, and I will be worried if I never can move my audience away from My Little Pony, because if the show ends and everyone unsubscribes to me, then I will be fucked, but I'm hoping we will all transition together into a happy, more conjoined channel. Anyway, incidentally, you guys should let me know what kind of other videos you'd like to see from me, um, other than My Little Pony. I am interested in what people actually want. Um, 
don't limit yourself in in assumptions of what I like. I like everything. You know, you, you probably know that I watch a shitload of anime, so I would be totally down for doing anime-related videos. I watch a lot of movies. I play video games. I do watch cartoons occasionally, like American ones. Mostly, I just watch My Little Pony, though. I could even do books. Doesn't, like, I can do everything. So, what kind of stuff do you actually want to see me talk about? I imagine this channel will eventually be a oh, crazy media variety channel, which is what I'm turning my After Dark channel into, as you may have noticed. I've been doing a lot of, like, film reviews and podcasts on there. Um, me and my brother have been doing the uh, the filmography of Edgar Wright. We've been doing a uh, podcast for each of those movies. I am currently recording a series of analyses of the Neon Genesis Evangelion anime with a friend of mine where it's still in podcast format so it will be on After Dark but it's like 20 minutes to 30 minutes per episode and we just kind of talk about Evangelion so like episodically so that's been a lot of fun so far and you know I kind of think well that's all fine and good for After Dark where it's going to get like a thousand or two thousand views but what if I took the points from those and made an episodic analysis of Evangelion would people be down for that you know so yeah uh, let me know what kind of stuff you think is cool for me to post here and I think that does it nearly half an hour is good enough so let me know what you think and I'll see you around